Welcome to Cultured Elegance. In this video, we will be exploring a part two of Millionaire's Row in Manhattan. Together, we will be visiting five different Gilded Age mansions. The first home we will be looking at is the William Solomon Mansion, located at 10 25th Avenue and was finished in 1906. The home is thought of as a hidden gem because the exterior is quite plain and mundane compared to the lavish, gilt work, and extravagant interiors beyond. By passing through the front door, you would enter into the Great Hall. It was here that you saw an imposing marble staircase that rose three stories high. The staircase was surrounded by amazing artistry from chateaus all across Europe. There was tapestries, marble work, and amazing paintings. At the top of the sweeping grand staircase was an ornate domed skylight and a Moorish style ceiling. The first floor housed a multitude of splendid rooms which you could enter off of the Great Hall. The dining room was done in a Renaissance theme featuring true Renaissance period furnishings. Even the fireplace was from a Renaissance villa. Surrounded by period tapestries, crushed velvet panels, and an extraordinary coffered ceiling, this room was beautifully and handsomely fitted. The Grand Salon was done in the Louis XVI style. Here again, the room had genuine period furnishings. The gilt work paneling is simply outstanding in this room, and I imagine it came from a real chateau originally. I do love how the curtains were made to match the design already fitted on the ceiling. Pictured here is the petite salon or the reception room where guests would be received. This room is of a smaller size and scale, but is still grand and lovely. And from this room, you can see beyond into the conservatory. The conservatory kept rare and beautiful flowers and foliage. Here, one can have breakfast or tea, or simply admire the wonderful flowers. The library was done in a Renaissance style and fitted in a masculine tone, as was common of the period. There was damask hung wallpaper, beautiful doors and carvings on them, and the fireplace came from an original chateau as well. We also have a picture of Mr. Solomon's bedroom, which is done in a French style and the dark oak paneling features more masculine tones. There's also some more comfortable furnishings pictured in this room. Off of his room, we can see a private study. Mrs. Solomon's room is done in the Rococo Louis XV style, fitted with real furnishings and panelings from the period. There's also a corner fireplace, which is very lovely. Here's also a look at one of the many guest bedrooms, and then this little landing here. The Solomons employed the architectural firm of Town Bridge and Livingston for all the renovations on their home. The next home we will visit is the William K. Vanderbilt House, also known as the Petit Chateau. The home resided at 660 Fifth Avenue. Construction was completed in 1882 by the designer Richard Morris Hunt, working closely with Alva Vanderbilt, the woman of the house. Together, they designed a chateauesque Renaissance revival home that combined late French Gothic style and Beaux Arts style. The home stood three and a half stories tall and was made of Indiana limestone. The roof was of blue-gray slate and was trimmed with copper. The extensive exterior and interior stone carving reportedly took more than 40 individual artisans. You would enter the home through an entrance vestibule on 5th Avenue. This vestibule opened onto a 60-foot long grand hall, which accessed all the primary first floor entertaining rooms. The entrance hall and sweeping stair were made of imported French con limestone. To the east was an 18 by 14 foot library with 16th century French Renaissance paneling surrounding the walls. Opposite from the library was the parlor. This room was 33 by 18 feet and styled in Grinling gibbons. Next to the parlor was a Louis XV Rococo style salon being 33 by 38 feet in length. The room was designed and built in Paris by Jules Allard and Sons, and was the first French-style room in America, launching the taste and the craze for French interiors. 
The room housed pieces originally made for Marie Antoinette. From the salon, you could enter into the breakfast room, being 20 by 27 feet. Before getting to the Grand Banquet Hall, there was also a Moorish-style smoking room. At the western end of the Grand Hall was the Banquet Hall, being 50 by 35 feet and rising two stories in height. It was the largest room in the house. The room was gothic in style and featured seven foot high wainscoting. There was oak paneling surrounding the room in the Renaissance style of Henry II, completed by expert furniture makers Herder Brothers. There was a double red sandstone fireplace and beautiful stained glass windows that depicted scenes from Francois I and Henry VIII's lives. The room was surrounded by tapestries, but also by two impressive masterpieces of 18th century art. The Autocon Mansion was built between the years of 1914 and 1918, residing at East 91st Street in Manhattan. Today, the home still stands and is a New York City landmark. It was one of the largest private homes in America, having roughly 80 rooms. Kahn commissioned the architects J. Armstrong Sternhaus and C. P. H. Gilbert to design the home in a neo-Italian Renaissance style. Upon completion, the home was praised as a remarkable example of a well-balanced readjustment of those aesthetic elements that are found in architecture of the early 16th century in Italy. The ground floor featured a private drive, reception rooms, an office, and a grand stair hall that led up to the many floors above. Once you were on the first floor, you entered onto a large reception hall with beautiful windows encompassing an open courtyard which would have housed Mediterranean-style plants. The reception hall has gothic themes and a wonderful carved ceiling. The room would have been filled with authentic tapestries from the Renaissance period, also fit with furnishings, rugs, and carpets. As we travel through the house and we make our way to the Adams-style ballroom, we really can see the grandeur and the beauty that this home completely encompassed. The dining room is the finest room in the home, completed in the Louis XIV style, fit with beautiful mirrors and marble surrounds. The remaining rooms of the home were all decorated in the 18th century French or Italian styles. The James B. Duke home was built between 1909 and 1912. Located at East 78th Street on the northeast corner of 5th Avenue, the building was designed by Horace Trumbauer and other architects, including Julian Abel. Together, they designed the home to have a French classical appearance, modeled after the Chateau Le Boutier, built in 1773. They desired the home to be an overscaled version of it, and so it was. From the facade, the home only appeared to be two stories, but indeed was three. The lot covered 13,000 square feet, with a frontage of 82 feet on 5th Avenue and 46 feet on 78th Street. Now on to the interiors. There are 32 rooms in total, and the home overall is 31,000 square feet. You enter the home through a recessed portico that is flanked by Doric-style columns on the ground floor. On either side of the main entrance were reception rooms for guests. The main hall is large and grand and has stone reliefs with mythological figures from classical antiquity. The stairway cascades through to the second floor, following a bronze balustrade. The stairway was lit by a beautiful skylight and underneath housed a tapestry. Off of the Great Hall, you could enter into one of the four large entertaining rooms being the music room, drawing room, library, or dining room. The library was fit in oak paneling designed in the Louis XV style and connected through to the dining room. The dining room was surrounded in marble and beautiful gilt work. And here is a look at the French drawing room. Just notice that incredible chandelier. The second floor had eight large bedrooms and there was also rooms for linen, dressing, and clothes. The basement housed service rooms, and the third floor housed servants' bedrooms. The double Astor Mansion was located at 840 and 841 Fifth Avenue on the northeast corner of 65th Street and was completed in 1896. It was here that the Mrs. Astor and her son, John Jacob Astor IV, and his family resided. The home's architect was Richard Morris Hunt and designed in the Renaissance Revival style. 
Mrs. Astor occupied the northern half while her son occupied the southern. As you entered the home, you would turn left to see Mrs. Astor and right to see J.J. Astor. The home was perfectly symmetrical and indeed a double mansion. At the back of the home, however, was the infamous ballroom where Mrs. Astor entertained her 400. This room housed Mrs. Astor's incredible art collection and was used as a gallery when not in use as a ballroom. The room spanned nearly the entire rear of the home and rose four stories in height. When the mansion was first built, there was double staircases on either side of the residences, one for Mrs. Astor and one for JJ Astor and his family. But when Mrs. Astor passed away, he converted the home to an all-encompassing mansion and got rid of the double effect. Now there was a grand entrance hall vestibule underneath a glass dome ceiling, and there was a small staircase pushed back to the side. There were impressive details throughout this area, including the various arches, Romanesque furniture, and centuries-old tapestries. In the original double mansion, there were reception rooms off of the Grand Hall. And here is Mrs. Astor's, done in the Rococo style. John Jacob Astor's parlor was also done in the Rococo style. This room had cream wall paneling fitted with gold leaf trims. The ceiling was painted in a mythological scene, and there were painted panels above the openings of every door. His original dining room was later converted into his library after the passing of his mother. The room was completed in the Adams style and housed a marble fireplace. While Mrs. Astor lived in the home, her salon was fitted in a French classical style, stuffed with a variety of important objects from her lifetime. After her passing, John Jacob transformed this area into a morning room. Originally, her dining room looked like this, but with the many renovations, John redid this room entirely into a much more impressive and grand space. And here is a look at some of the other rooms upstairs as well and the variety of different floors that the home had. Please let me know in the comments which home was your favorite and why. Can't wait to see you in the next video.